All right, everyone. Welcome to the, our uh, Lunch and Learn for the Cleveland Developers Group. Our topic today is the CLI in the CLE. Um, um, I'm going to have to put this in sludge, but I don't know if it'll work in sludge, so sure, we're just going to do it this way. So our agenda today, we're going to do a brief welcome and intro. Um, we can share achievements. Uh, there's only five of us so far, so that might be quick. Um, and then we'll get into the topic and we'll end with um, just announcements, any upcoming events that anyone's interested in. So by way of intro, I'm Linda Kane. I'm one of the co-leaders of the Cleveland Work Group. Um, I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for 15 years um, and I currently work as a team lead at Great Minds. Orlando, you're up. Hi everybody, I'm Orlando Briseño. I'm the other colleague in the, uh, in the CLE developer group and I work currently in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I have an official title, but I like to call myself the Salesforce guy because I'm the only Salesforce person there. Welcome and thank you for joining. So our habit is to start out by asking people, have you earned any new certifications, started a new job? Anyone know of open positions at the companies they're at? Um, are you new to our group? We just want to celebrate if we can. Anyone have anything new? I Mike, get, anything new? <laughs> I could get a, a little new certification. I got the, uh, the marketing associate and uh, meaning to get more into marketing cloud and that was a good step in, in the right direction. Cool. Uh, Armando posted that he's working on PD1, which is great. It's a, it's a, for some people it can be particularly tough though, so applaud him for taking that on. I'm getting ready. Next month I'm going to take the JavaScript one. So getting ready for it, just not there yet. But close, <laughs> closer than I was. My most recent one was the the data cloud cert. Um, so that was very different. <laughs> 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 Definitely not in my wheelhouse for sure. But um, data cloud is is it's pretty massive. So. Ah, oh, that, that's so cool, Mike. Congrats, everybody. Let's... Uh, Armando would like to to know, Mike, uh, how was that uh, cert? Um, you know, they had a um, a course that I was able to enroll in through the partner through the partner community in the consulting space, um, and we had a weekly um, session. <clears throat> learning about the different components and data cloud and so that was a that was a big help this was before they had um, the trailheads for that so I think now now there's trailheads of what of what I went through um, so that'll probably be very nice to have in, in trailhead for <clears throat> um, for learning or getting focusing on that data cloud cert so but it just it's a it's it's a different type of it's hard to say it because it's it's kind of around like engineering uh and data science data scientist and and uh getting to understand that 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 data model these dmos and data lake objects and things so it is a little bit different um but uh yeah it was something at, for me to at work, um, a company was asking for a couple of people to raise their hand to get the cert. Um, so obviously I always rose, raised my hand for those. Yeah. But it was definitely a lot different than what we were used to, for sure. That's so cool. I, I noticed uh, yesterday, I, I've been checking and checking on Trailhead Academy for new offerings of the admin associate bootcamp because I, I, I like to offer that in the Rockford for training for, for the users. And I noticed the data architect uh, bootcamp that the one for the 
data architecture certification now includes topics for, about uh, data cloud, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to move on so that we can fit everything in. So we're going to get started on our topic. Topic today is the CLI and the CLE, and yes, I have a lot of Cleveland pictures in my slides for this. <laughs> so uh, first things up when you're doing the CLI, uh, installing the CLI, and I will um, be sharing um, these slides as well as um, the handout for the hands-on that's happening tomorrow if you're able to join us. And even if you're not able to join us, you're welcome to try the hands-on on your own. So installing um, the CLI, you kind of have two options. So for your various platforms, there is an installer, or you can also install it through NPN. And this is just kind of an overview of that. Um, I also highly recommend you update frequently your Salesforce CLI. Uh, the commands are pretty simple, whether, you know, especially if you did the direct install to just run SF update. Um, it's supposed to auto update. I don't think it always does. So I just recommend that people check that periodically, especially if you're also using VS Code and the extensions, because um, sometimes a mismatch between those can cause issues. So um, as mentioned, the VS Code, making sure you have the Salesforce extension pack or the extended one, um, it is included in both. Um, and then running those commands, getting to the uh, little control CMD or uh, in shift P to get to those commands, or even right clicking on various things within a uh, Salesforce project will allow you to access some of those commands. So getting into the actual commands, which is the bulk of what this is for. So help, you know, what do I do if I'm lost or I'm not sure what command? There is a help command. It's fairly simple, sf-h or dash dash help. Um, I give a little example here of uh, sf help project retrieve start, which will give you all the information about that command and as well as the options that you can run with it. So kind of a way to find directions when you're in the CLI. Um, and of course, the first thing you usually run with the Salesforce CLI is generating a project if you don't already have one. So SF generate project or project generate with the name of that project. It's going to create that project folder within your current location. So whatever your folder, your container you're contained in, um, it will create that project folder right there with the basic framework for a Salesforce project. Um, things like the project.json, um, your force app folder, which then includes main default, and some of the key project folders or custom metadata folders that would be in there, like LWC, Aura, Classes. Um, some, of the, some of the other folders will appear as you retrieve things or as you create them yourself if you need them. Um, and after I go through these commands, I am going to give a demo and show a number of these. So. Um, connecting to an org, of course, is a very important step when we're doing this so we can actually retrieve and deploy stuff. Um, so the connect, and there's actually more to the options for this than I show on here, but the basic command is SF org login web. This is the command that will open a browser to allow you to log in with your credentials. You are able to use that no matter if you're using uh, just username password, user password with MFA or an SSO because you get basically to the login screen. And if you need to use an SSO, you can go to uh, custom there. You also have the option to add the dash R, which allows you to put in the specific URL you are going to. Um, if you're using this code, I highly recommend you do that for a sandbox that you actually list the domain, the direct URL domain for that sandbox. Um, there are also other options such as uh, aliasing your org. So you can uh, use dash a or dash dash alias to create an alias name for it. You can also set it as the default. So set default. If it's a dev hub, you can set it as the dev hub default. These are just some of the options. 
once you've um, connected to the org, or if you're not sure if you're connected to orgs, uh, SF org list allows you to see the current orgs that you have connection. It also helps you identify when that connection that you may have set up previously is no longer working because it will give you that error message. It actually tests each of the connections when it runs that command. So this is my warning. Everything else I'm going to talk about requires you be connected to an org because obviously if you're not connected to an org, you're not able to really manipulate metadata in any way or run things. <laughs> So exploring the schema, the first thing. Um, there are two commands that allow you to kind of explore the S objects that are within your org. So the various objects in your org. Uh, SF, S object list with a dash S allows you to explore specific object types. So it literally just gives you a list of either the all the objects, just the standard objects, or the custom objects within your org. It is an alphabetized list. Just kind of scrolls down the screen really quick. Um, there are some options where you could write that out to a file. You can also get the full metadata for a given object by using SFS object describe with the dash S and the name of the object. Um, that is a very long listing. It has everything that's part of the metadata of that object. There is also a secondary um, option to have it use the tooling API that gives a slightly different view of that. Um, I find that I prefer that option better, but I think that's just preference. So pulling and um, retrieving source data. So this is where you're pulling, you're making a copy of it within the structure that you created on your local machine. So um, the main command for that is SF project retrieve start. The option I prefer to use most often is dash M for metadata, and then I list the metadata type. Um, if you want a specific component, so you're looking for a specific class, a specific custom field, a specific object, you use the metadata type name, colon, and the name of that object. So say I want the lead object, I would say dash M, I'd say custom object, the C and the O in custom object are capitalized, so it's one word, colon, and then lead, and lead has to be capitalized. We'll say it is very picky about um, case sensitivity within this command when you run it. But you can do that for any metadata type that's accessible. I give some examples here. Notice that, and one of the things to note is when you pull those, the folder it goes into does not always match exactly the naming. So let, you have to actually type lightning component bundle and that'll store it in the LWC folder. Apex class stores in classes. And even if you're pulling a standard object, you still use the word custom object. <laughs> Same for a field. So creating new code. So say you are going to create an Apex class or a trigger. Um, the first thing you have to know is you have to go to the correct folder for that. So wherever you run these generate commands, um, it generates that type of record um, directly in the folder you're at at the time. So if you need to, if you want to generate an Apex class, you need to first traverse within your operating system from the main project folder down to through ForceApp, main, default, and then classes. You must be in the classes folder and then you should easily be able to run SF Apex generate class dash N with the name of the class you want to use. Um, dash N could also be dash dash name you want the clarification. You can do the same for a trigger, a visual force page, um, and um, a lightning component. It's the same command. It just depends on which folder you're on, and you need to specify the type to be either Aura or LWC. And this will generate very a very, um, the two, basically, for most of these, the two files, um, LWC or Aura will create each of the different component parts that are part of that object. Uh, along with, so you'll, like for an Apex class, you'll get the .apex file as well as the metadata. Um, how do you traverse down? That depends on your operating system. So in my case, I'm on Windows. So if I'm in the project folder, I would probably do a dir command just so I can see the folder structure. 
um, for the next level and I would CD space and the folder I need to go to. So CD space uh, four stash app to get to the first and then CD space main, or I think it's main and then CD space default. And I'll show that in the demo mic as well. And then of course you can move back up um, on Windows machines dot using cd space dot dot. I'm sorry, I don't know the commands as well for Mac. <laughs> um, so deploying new code, very much like the command we showed for retrieving code, where we had SF project retrieve start. This is SF project deploy start. Um, if the only things you have within your force app folder are the things you want to deploy, you can pretty much run this from the project level and it will deploy everything within that folder. If you want to retrieve a specific piece of metadata, I would recommend either using source path and um, to, to and the direct path of the file or using the metadata and declaring the metadata type colon the name of the file. Hello Joy, thank you for joining us. Um, so the deploy is pretty, and it will let you know whether it succeeds or not, which is great feedback right away. And the error messages are usually somewhat useful um, in figuring out what's wrong. <laughs> so testing code, you can actually run tests from within the CLI. So the SF Apex run tests allows you to specify either an Apex class, or you can actually use level and choose the level, meaning all tests, um, all local tests uh, that you want to run. And if you include the parameter dash C, it displays the code coverage as well, which is, you know, sometimes useful, especially if you're running all local tests. Um, you're also able to run just tests this way with the SF Force Lightning LWC test run and then the name of the test. This is one I have not tried, so um, <laughs> if someone tries it, let, let me know how it goes. And then data, you can access data with a CLI. Um, with the announcement from the last release that Workbench is no longer really being supported or upgraded, this is gonna become uh, one of the ways that it's going to be easier to query data. Um, I won't say it's the easiest, but it's one way to do it. So SF data query dash Q and then in uh, at least single quote, maybe double quote, the actual select statement for your SQL query and you can then get results. I will warn you the SF data query will only give you up to 2000 records per run but when there are more than 2,000, it gives you an ID and then you can resume from that ID on with your poll to get the next 2,000 and it keeps doing that. Not always fun, but it's a way to do it. You can also create records and get records directly. So you can use the SF create record, name, use the, uh, I think it's dash O to specify the object and then um, dash V to specify the actual values you wanna put in that record. And for get records, you have options where you can retrieve records based on ID or based on the value of a field, which is kind of nice. And I'll, I'll probably run a query example. Um, it's not what I wanted to do. <sighs> Click the mouse in the right place. All right, so moving on to the demo. So let me... CMD up here and of course it's opening on the wrong screen so I will bring this over. Can everyone see? Yes we can see my. So this is my command prompt screen and I hope it's visible enough. Um, looks like it might be a little small. Let's see if we can. I think how I can zoom in. You know what I'm going to control zoom a little bit better. Do you want to make, make the font larger? Yeah, I don't know how to do that in CMD, but I know how I can do it here. So let me just, just um, do, do, turn I don't know about CMD, but in the uh, Mac terminal, you do uh, command plus uh, as if it was a 
Chrome browser? I I don't know if I can do that in this, so I'm just going to... I mean, in... CM in the command. Do this right here in the sim. Hopefully that'll be a little better, maybe. But... Improved. Greatly improved. Thank you. Okay, good. Because I know it's hard to when we're doing text. So as I mentioned, um, so I'm already in a project. So I'm actually going to move around and um, go up to my user drive. Okay, so like, um, and I want to put this in loads. So I want to go to downloads. Okay, so first a project, so you can see what that looks like on the command is fairly simple, as I mentioned. So project generate. And then dash, I'm going to call this one CLE demo. Generally runs pretty quick. So it's created my folder. If I do a quick dir, I should have CLA de CLE demo folder here. And then I want to uh, move into it. So I'm going to say CD CLE demo. And if I do a quick dir, I can see the, the high level folder. Um, so the main folder that I'm going to worry about mostly. For my file go into so that's where I'll be moving into when I need to do things but for the most part um, that project is login web I'm going to alias this as sit which is dash a as demo and sorry the color is doing something weird I'm going to set this as my default so I don't have to keep you org I'm connected to All right, something happened in there. Oh, I forgot SF. <laughs> that would help. <laughs> The fun of typing and forgetting command. Type something wrong again. Yes. All right. All right. Now we've got it. See the alias and then set default. And I'm going to, I'm going to use a, I'm using a trailhead. So let me just put in the username and the password and I've actually connected this one before so what it won't give me is the usual message asking me if I want to allow it but usually the first time you connect an org to the CLI it asks you if you want to allow it um, this is just going to tell me it's authorized um, and I can then go back to my thing and you can see it's showing me my message that it was authorized I can check this really quickly by using SF org list, as I mentioned before, to see the list of orgs. I and I should have four orgs connected. And I'm not seeing. Well, I'm in VS Code, so it should default, but it's not. So let me just fix VS Code so that I don't have to worry about this. And I'm just going to click on that. I actually have two different names for this org, but that's okay. Two different aliases now, but that won't hurt anything. So we are definitely connected to um, the org I want to be connected to. So really quickly, let's see what kind of objects are in here. So set S, S object list. And 
I'm just going to do because it's a trailhead playground and I've tried it before and I know there are no custom objects in the trailhead playground by default when you start. So going to run and you can see it went very quickly through that list and I'm on the W's on my screen and there are a lot of custom or I'm sorry objects in an org and if you went through this whole list you would see uh, no cosacks because this org is a fairly new playground but I could show you that SF S object list dash S yep there are no custom objects found so I have my folder yet because I haven't pulled any thing yet so SF project retrieve start why is my type sometimes I don't type fast enough sometimes I type too fast so retrieve start do a specific metadata and we're going to do a custom object this time which is custom objects in this org, but we're just going to pull down the information for lead. Retrieve the lead object along with its custom views. Um, if there are web URLs, I'm index in views, but it's running and it's finished. Um, if I move to my force app and then main and then default. Nope. All right. Let's see. Objects. So CD object. I can see now that I have a lead object, which is a folder in this case. So I go to that lead folder. And I can see I have fields, list views, and metadata for the object. So that has pulled. I'm going to go traverse back up at least two levels. Default. Get my list of metadata types in here. Let's see where. running oh so fast at the moment. I want to go into the classes folder for this next um, and it's empty and I want to generate see what it looks like when I generate a class so I'm going to SF apex generate a class I'm going to give it a name of Cledev hello And it's going to generate the files that make up an, a basic Apex class. And it's telling me it's where it's putting it. Um, because I'm in that folder, it's using that as the target and files. So if I direct the files, I can see those files. I'm going to open new browser window really quick and get it to the right direction before I bring it over. So in my downloads, so, sorry if this is a little smaller, but in my downloads, I'm in the project folder for SAP, main default classes. So it generated the two files, as we already talked about the class and the metadata. If I were to open the metadata file, which Been really quick in Notepad. Bring this over. You can see it's got the basic of the XML with um, not exactly the current version, but it's actually the current version for what when I generated a project right now is using 59. And if I open this one in Notepad, you're going to see all it has really is the declaration of the class is public and a a constructor with and from there then I could add it and deploy and I'm going to do one from my 
folder here, desktop. I have a project where I have some other data stored. So I'm just gonna traverse through here. Um, I will tell you this is some sometimes how I work on stuff. I create a project and store stuff really nice and slow. All right, so I have these four right here from another project that I did that I'm just going to copy right into the classes folder of the project that we have. Sorry, it's moving really slow. <laughs> so along with the Klee dev hello we created, I'm just going to put in these four classes. Actually, it's two classes. So it's added die. So if you've ever seen, uh, joined us for Cleveland Sales Force Saturday virtual ago, we were building like a running game in Flow, and one of the things we needed was a random four-sided die or twenty-sided die to roll. does that. I'm go going to uh, in the die or in, in my command, I'm going to go back up to my four my project folder actually. I'm sorry, it takes me a while to remember. So, and now I'm going to retrieve those, not retrieve, I'm going to deploy the two classes that I just copied over. So, so um, that command is as SF project and I'm going to do dash M for metadata apex class and you can actually do more than one at a time so that I don't run in so I you know I can check my issues if I have. um just doing the controller class first and letting that send to the org if it has issues it's going to let me know and it created it successfully because if it didn't it would tell me for the test class and deploy that out and the other fun thing is I can open my and say org open and it will open the org in a browser for me so right here I'm in that trailhead playground for me it took me directly to set up, which is very convenient. And I'm just going to really quickly open Dev Council and open those classes. So I can see these classes right here. So here's the 20 sided die controller test. And here is the actual 20 sided die controller, which has one method called get die roll in it. So they did deploy to the org. They weren't there before, I promise. Um, so the next piece I wanted to demo, which where did my command line go? Here we go. We're doing this. All right. So test is the next thing I wanted to show really quick. Now that I've got an Apex class test, test class in there, um, so which the command is SF Apex run test and the name of the actual test class and it will actually run the test and hopefully this does not take a lot of time. Um, sometimes it takes a while with these to, to run um, we're just going to let that go. Ours, in the meantime, while we're waiting for that to run. And you're welcome to come off mute if you want to ask questions. I should probably see if I can see if it's running in here. All right, this shows it ran and finished. I don't know why it's 
has not retrieved it to there yet. By the way, it did pass, so. And that I wish that demo was better for that. <laughs> but, you know, That's the nature demo. of live demos. <laughs> Come on, Linda, we know better. <laughs> I know. Um, and so the only other, the only other one I promised to, to demo really quick. Um, so FF SF data query. I've gotten much better at these lately. So if I just say select um, ID name from lead because you know and just put it in a single quote and run it i should get the list of leads currently in the mix there are a whole 22 with names i would never come up with so that um <laughs> but i can just any sql query right through this which is great um and get the results uh luckily Unfortunately, there's nothing in this org that I can run that has more than 2,000 records so that I could show you the idea of that continuation ID. But, um, and then I can always, you know, because it's in text form right now, I can always cut it and paste it to something and then eventually get it or something useful if I needed to. Um, and of course, I can easily create, I had mentioned the create a record too. And I'm, right? um, SF uh, data create. I think it's uh, um, dash S for the object. So if I create um, an account, dash V for values and um, insert quote. So name equals, and I think then I have to put it in a quote. Um, equals yellow. I e devs to hopefully I formatted that correctly. Oh, I did something wrong. Okay. So it did. I forgot part of one of the commands, but um <laughs> It did create a record, it gave me the ID. So then I can say, uh, F. oh, come on. Oh, I So SF dash ID. And I'm just going to paste that record ID in. And I forgot something. All right. So this is what we do when we forget something is we, we Google it. And the link actually to the Salesforce CI is in the presentation, but this is going to be faster. <laughs> Um, I can tell you, I bookmark this in every browser I have because I use it a lot. But, uh, so data get record right here. And I'm sure I forgot, oh, dash, dash S object, which is, uh, shortcutted as dash S and I is record ID. So really quick, we can alter this. So we can that record ID and it shows me every field and value for that record when I pull it. 
which is kind of nice. Quickly scan into the name, and here's the all the other fields. So if I wanted to up actually do an SF data update record, give the ID and whatever value I want to update as well. Questions? Anything anyone else wants to see? Thank you, Joey. Thank, <laughs> thank you for joining. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I think they're, they're, they need to yeah. go. I got to go, Linda. Thank you. I'll catch the recording and the rewinding okay. and pausing. I'm excited. Thank you. So that's kind of the demo part. Linda, you want to try? What? Yeah, I know it was it's really good. If you wanted to try something for uh, that that you mentioned that you wanted to to do uh, was to redirect the output of the query, for example, to a file. I pasted how to do that in a Unix system. I chat GPT my way into seeing how to do it in PowerShell. I don't know if you want to try it. I don't think I want to do it right now in PowerShell. Um, <laughs> it might actually take a while to run. Okay, this but um. There, there, that command is also given in the CLI stuff. So like if I were, especially under query, I feel like that's where one of the great places to use it. Um, do they have a redirect on here? Yeah, a file in this case, like to put up to output to a file. Um, okay. Some of the commands use, uh, I think dash, I feel like there was another command in some of the commands to direct the output. But, um, and as I mentioned, you know, if, if you have more than 2000 records, it'll return the first 2000 records with an ID and it's query resume. And you have to give it that ID to get the next 2000 records. Gotcha, cool. That is our demo for today. Um, I do have in the slide deck a number of resources, including trailheads specifically on the CLI, both modules and projects. And um, all links to various pieces of documentation about the CLI. So your setup, your command reference that I had called up. There is, if you want to create your own plugin for the Salesforce CLI, there is a developer guide for that. Um, the general DX developer guide and the experience website. And then also the very last link on here will take you to the slide deck as well as the hands-on exercise that I put together. Um, similar to the demo, but not exactly like the demo. It actually takes you through a few other steps and things. Um, so that is also available to you. Uh, of course, I welcome anyone to join us tomorrow morning at Common Grounds for the hands-on session. So you can try it on your own, ask questions as you need help, or even if you just want to try things beyond what's in that demo, we'll, I'll be on hand to help you through that. So thank you. Yeah, these pictures are a little louder. It's not that young anymore, but... <laughs> And uh, so that's the only actually upcoming event I had to list out. And of course, in May, there'll be Salesforce Saturdays again as well. Linda, did you have anything to add? Nothing. Great demo, Linda. All right. Thank you all for joining. Uh, have a great great rest of your Friday. Have a nice weekend and, and see, see you tomorrow for those that, that can attend. Take care. Appreciate you guys.